Hey everyone, welcome to Dr. J Off Air. I am Amy Vanderoff along with Dr. J at Innovations Medical and today we're talking about stem cells. It's a topic we've talked about on GMT before. It's been explained as medical miracles. It's also been explained as unethical or scams. People don't know what to believe. So we're gonna break it down into bite-sized pieces, literally, put some candy, and explain what stem cells actually can do for so many disorders. So, Dr. J, how are you? Good morning. Yes, it's, it's, a, it's a topic that, that requires some serious discussion and can be complex. So we've tried to give a couple of illustrations today that are really gonna help folks understand why this is such an exciting technology and why people are so interested. Okay, so what are stem cells? Let's start there. Well, most adult cells don't have the potential to make new copies of themselves. A muscle cell is a muscle cell. It can't make a new muscle cell. If I go and work out in the gym and double the size of my biceps, all of the muscle cells in my arm have grown, they've gotten larger, but I don't have any new muscle cells. Okay. The heart muscle can't replicate. Bone, mus bone can to a tiny extent. Now skin cells can. So what stem cells can do, if this, if this green M&M is a stem cell, what it can do is it can make new copies, new, new copies of the same cell. That's really important and that plays a big role and that's one of the two features that stem cells can do. Okay. The other thing that makes stem cells really special is not only can a green M&M become a green M&M, but it can become a red M&M. So, just to use the example of the skin, if I cut my skin, a stem cell can make the skin cells on the surface. It can also make the skin, stem cell, the skin cells in the lower skin, which is called the dermis. Right. It can also turn into the blood vessels and the supporting structures that we need, so it can become orange type cells. Come all the different types of cells required to heal the cut in my finger. Wow, those stem cells are pretty significant. So, okay, so where do we get these guys? So, there are some tissues that have an abundance of skin cells, stem cells. Our skin does, uh, our fat does, okay. our bone marrow does, the linings of our intestines do. So those areas tend to heal fairly readily and there's a lot of stem cells there. Okay. The ones that have been able to be used for medical purposes in the United States have mostly been bone marrow up until recently. And now we're using more and more fat stem cells because fat is easily accessible. And for adults, we have a lot more stem cells remaining in our fat than we do in our bone marrow. Okay, so um, stem cells, how do they work? How, does it, how do they, stem cells and growth factors work together for healing? Well, if we talk about uh, the, we have an example of, cut, of where you cut your finger, okay. and we're going to use that example. So if you cut your finger, your, the damaged cells send out growth factors. Okay. Those growth factors do several things. Now those are the body's text messengers, and they send out messages and say, I'm cut, I'm hurt. So first thing that comes in are various white blood cells that clean up the damage, destroy any bacteria or anything, and they produce more growth factors. And then those say to the stem cells that are in the area of our skin, hey, you need to start making new skin. And they also call the stem cells that are circulating in our blood and other things, you need to come to this area, give us, make us new blood vessels, make us new uh, nerves, make us new connective tissue, all the things it requires to heal. As those cells grow and the wound closes, the, the growth factor shut off, the process ends, and all the stem cells go back to just sitting around waiting for the next time they're called. Okay, so if stem cells do all of this, then the growth factors, then how can adding more of our own stuff help with healing? Boy, that's the question that we get the most. People really can't understand why, well, if you're just giving me back what I already have, what I already have how does it help? Yeah. Well, Let's break that down. I, I, I've got a really neat illustration that, that hopefully will help folks understand exactly what's going on. For both, for my kids and, and now my grandkids, you could ask them and they'll tell you granddad can fix anything. Okay? <laughs> That's great to know. So, when granddad fixes anything, I tell you, my, 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 my biggest friend in the world as Mr. Fix-It is, is super glue. Okay. Okay? So, 
we've got a dragon here and, and we've glued his wing back on but you know sometimes when the dragon breaks the best way to fix it is to buy a new dragon okay so 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 sometimes I cheat. You have to, I mean, you have to keep your reputation, <laughs> right? right? You're sometimes you cheat. <laughs> the reason this is important, though, skin, blood, we lose blood, lining of our intestines, those tissues have so many stem cells okay. that unless the injury is really severe, it can replace the injury, repair the injury, and it's just like new. You can't, there's so many stem cells in the area that they heal so readily that it's just exactly like buying a brand new dragon. Okay? Okay. Those are the kind of stem, tissues that have lots of stem cells. Now, there are some tissues like muscle or like bone that can heal, but when they heal, they always leave a little scar. If you break a bone, even as a child, if you break a bone 30 years later, they can still see where you broke the bone. Okay? and it leaves a callus. It heals. heals well. There are enough stem cells to get the job done, but it requires a little bit and it leaves a little bit of scar. Okay. Then there are tissues that have basically no stem cell. Okay? And the problem with those tissues is just like this empty superglue. It's gone. That's neurologic tissue. That's heart muscle. It's our blood vessels. A lot of very important tissues have basically no stem cells available. Just wasn't part of how human beings were created and how we evolved. Those tissues didn't get any stem cells. So what we're doing when we go get new stem cells, when we take the stem cells from your stem cells, from your skin, yep. your fat, Okay, and fat's the one that was most readily available in adults. Mm -hmm. We are providing new superglue. So we've got an area now that has new superglue that can repair. Couldn't, couldn't have done it on its own. Could not have done it on its own, even though it's your cells and it's your tissue. It amazing. couldn't have done it on its own. We're able to provide that into the area like cartilage. Knee cartilage is a great example. We can't heal cartilage. It doesn't have any stem cells. Okay. Really break down the kind of disorders that stem cells are being researched and that you're seeing those real wow factors, those areas that otherwise could not have healed like The this. real wow factor right now, the one that we're seeing the very most is osteoarthritis or wear and tear arthritis. People who have been told they need a joint replacement a knee or, or a knee replacement, a hip replacement. Those are the prime candidates. And there are several groups doing this and we don't have anything ready for publication yet. But in general, everyone is seeing about 80% of patients get a good response and most of those don't have to go on to have joint replacement. The good example that I give when talking about that is at the 2012 Olympics, one of the British horses was injured in February, injured its foot, and they were told they were going to put the, foot down, put the horse down. But the rider was desperate. She wanted to ride in the Olympics, so they did fat stem cells, that horse's own fat stem cells. No way. And it regrew the ligament. Horses are just like humans. They can't regrow ligaments normally. The horse regrew the ligament, competed in the Olympic Games in August of 2012, won the bronze medal. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Who saved the horse's life with stem cells? That's saved great. the horse's life. Yeah. And it went on to medal at the and Olympics. And medal at the Olympics, just to go to show you that this was someone who was completely injured and then was an Olympic So that's, that's the area that we're probably the furthest advanced. We're starting to get some real comfort zones that's on who great. we can help. That is really neat. Where else can we see it? So the one we're doing more and more is chronic lung disease. Okay. Folks with emphysema or COPD are really seeing improvement in how far they can walk. They're being able to stay out of the hospital more commonly. And those are the parameters we're trying to measure. Because what we'd like to do, we're not there yet. 
We'd like to be able to tell you, hey, the average person goes from being able to walk 100 feet to being able to walk 100 yards. Yeah. But we don't have that data yet. But that's but where we we're working. It. It. That's where we're headed. Okay, so if someone wants more information, they're hearing this, they think this might be an option for me. There's a lot of good stuff online on your website. Well, and, and we're seeing more and more people with neurologic conditions that, like neuropathy, that mm -hmm. respond. Uh, we have a protocol for stroke. Uh, we have a protocol for multiple sclerosis. Uh, there are people with heart failure, both from heart attacks and from cardiomyopathies that are responding. And then there are uh, some simple ones like hair loss that respond well. Erectile dysfunction that doesn't respond to other treatments. This is, a, this is an area that we're really doing a lot of good work on. That is really cool. Okay, so obviously that clears up some of the myths um, it breaks it down into bite-sized pieces to kind of show you exactly how stem cells work and also those disorders that maybe resonate with someone who's watching they have to come in for that consultation meet with you find out what's going on and see if stem cells are, right for, are, are right for them. Dr. J, really good stuff today. Thank you. Thanks for having us over.